Who's going further in the playoffs? Thunder or Blazers? The Thunder. And I've been spending all year saying, look, this is really, after the early part of the season, a two-team race between Golden State and Houston, and I still believe that. But in the playoffs, the Thunder present the biggest scare you know, challenge, unless Kawhi comes back and everything's perfect with the Spurs. The Thunder are the biggest threat because, yes, Roberson's down. And by the way, everyone has to decide, are we saying Roberson or Roberson? I can't take it anymore. But the point is, yes, he's gone. But with him goes a shot from the outside that no one even has to pay attention to. And, and sure, their rotation's not going to be as deep as many. They're top-heavy. But in the shorter rotation in the playoffs, Stephen A., think about the following lineups. You could have Westbrook. At the one, Paul George at the two, Carmelo at the three, Patrick Patterson at times at the four, and Stephen Adams at the five. That means Westbrook has three guys to pass it to, all of whom can shoot and score, because Patterson's really a stretch four. Or Corey Brewer. You know, you can mix, put Corey Brewer in the mix and get pretty good defense and also a guy who shot behind the arc has come back. So they have, when you consider the kind of front-line lineup that OKC can put out there, that's real. Like that's not a team I'm looking forward to playing in the playoffs. I don't care who you are. I don't blame you for feeling that way. I sincerely hope you're right because I'm rooting for my man Melo to be in a conference finals to showcase what he brings to the table, no doubt. But if I go by what I'm seeing during throughout this season, I'm going to go with Portland in this particular situation as the team with the potential to make the kind of noise because I think guard play is what catapults you to success on the NBA level. And don't get me started with this brother Damian Lillard. By the way, also shooting about 91% from the free throw line. He's the modern day Mr. Big Shot that as far as I'm yep. concerned. We know the numbers in terms of averaging 26 a game, what he's doing from three-point range, his ability to get to the hole, make things happen. But I can't emphasize enough what Neil O'Shea, the GM, and the coach Terry Stotts has done because they've got balance. Yeah, you only got three guys averaging the double digits, Max, but they got about another three of three dudes or so averaging better than eight points a game. Knowing what their roles are, a couple of defenders, a couple of guys to come off the bench, spell for you, run the show, make sure you don't lose anything. You got a kid like Shabazz Napier. He's only averaging like nine points a game. Max, he's only playing 21 minutes a game. So he's a guy that comes off the bench, gives you a little punch, then goes back to the bench after he's done his job so Lily, Lily can get a breather along with C.J. McCollum. I like the fact that they seem to trust each other a little bit more and they don't nosedive once their starters go to the bench. Their secondary unit seems to be more cohesive, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. They have guys that somehow find a way to put the ball in a hole enough to make them respectable and competitive. They're not the go Oklahoma City Thunder where you got these starters who can beat anybody. And then the second you go to their bench, they, they fall like a bag of cheap bricks for crying out loud. That's your problem with OKC. I don't think that's a problem with Portland, which is why right now I think Portland would be the team that looks like it has a better shot of being a threat in the West than OKC.